Hello. Hey, Glenn. Hey. Hey, Glenn. How are you? Uh, I'm all right, Glenn. I just started um, working again. Yeah. Hopefully I can keep this job and I'll have some funds. Huh. And may and you're still accepting uh donations, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll send I'll If send I don't some. if I don't bake <laughs> right now there are a number of places in on the front lawn that show that the actual temperature, unlike the temperature that's announced on the radio, uh, is 50 degrees centigrade wow. and more. By the way, Dana's on the line. Hey? I forgot to tell you, Dana's on the line as well. Yeah, I heard him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's faster than you. <laughs> yeah. So uh 50, 50 degrees centigrade is uh uh over 125 30 or something which wow. is uh in Death Valley is not true uh temperature for the entire area but it's a magnetic cloud in different locations, it's like being in a microwave. Hmm. Wow. Cooking. So they can manipulate the weather with magnetism. Yeah, what what a microwave oven does, this is what magnetism does. Hmm. It keeps no what's there but not the temperature, not the uh, air around it. You know, the microwave oven doesn't get hot, but what's in it gets cooked. And in nature, what's in it is anything that has water in it, and that includes human beings. And what the magnetism does as everything heats up in the body is it pulls on the glands, and the glands in the body clump up, and then they can't do what they're supposed to do. The net result of clumping together in the brain is Alzheimer's. The physical result uh, can be uh, heart attacks, strokes, um, lung disease, breast cancer, fat bottom ladies that, you know, the magnetism draws everything down to below the waist. And on men, the problem is called hydroxyl which is basically the taking of all your urine network and uh, reproductive network and clumping it and pulling it down so that uh, you lose control and uh, can start peeing at any time, any place. And, of course, can't have sex because penis gets drawn inside and down into the scrotum. Wow. In well, a they... vehicle, uh, it affects uh, the things that are operated magnetically. Like when you turn the starter on on a car, what happens is two parts move together to cause a contact and allow electrical charge from the battery to start the vehicle. But that's the most obvious 
what what exists in in magnets in the in cars is all kinds of little gadgets and one of the gadgets is called a parking lock and what it does is it when you're parked and you have your um, transmission in park a magnet is preventing the gears from touching and the vehicle is stopped and stays there even though it's running if you're in a magnetic field however and you turn off the vehicle the magnet releases and the vehicle can roll back if it's on a hill there's a singer last week or so that was killed in his driveway when his vehicle rolled backwards and crushed him against a, uh, a fence another one in Vancouver where a guy had parked his car in the driveway and uh, looked out his window that night and saw his car was in the middle of the street at the bottom of his driveway. And he took it in and he said, no, there's nothing wrong with it. And he brought it back, but he had a security system. And second time it happened, he turned on the security system and looked at it, and it was the vehicle rolling down backwards from his driveway into the street. Nobody in it. But what had occurred underground was an electromagnetic discharge had charged the ground and by charging the ground the poles were opposite to the uh, uh, lock on his transmission and the vehicle rolls down the hill other people driving down the road all of a sudden have their cars turn off and millions of dollars are being spent in courts over the issue with General Motors. Airbags that turn themselves on when there's no accident and people have been killed in the front seat. But nobody tells in the news what's causing it. They say it's a defect, a defect in the manufacturing, not a defect. It's electromagnetism in the road. What they're doing is they're working on a system for driverless cars, self operating vehicles. The major problem that they have with electric vehicles is the batteries don't hold up hold enough power and therefore they don't charge um, at the appropriate moment and you may end up being someplace where there's no plug in or whatever. So the intent is to turn every road into a magnetic field so that as you drive, your car is always charging from the road. But what they hadn't counted on is because of the construction of today's vehicles, what it's doing is turning things on and off that were never intended to be turned on and off 
by a road. And cars are shutting down or starting up on their own because of things like transmission locks unlocking. Here, I could never figure out. I got the truck, parked it in the driveway beside the stairs leading to the basement. And all of a sudden, four times in 12, 13 months, I had to have the truck towed to the garage because it wouldn't start. Turn the on and off key and the starter wouldn't come together because it was competing with an opposite charge coming from the stairwell leading to the basement. And eventually, I discovered what it was. It was the stairwell, something in the concrete of the steps leading out of the basement, the top step and the platform was magnetized. And it was magnetized by the wire coming from the electrical box and leading to the ground. And the ground is a pole six feet tall or so, five, six feet, in the ground with a wire leading back to the electrical box. And the supposed purpose is if you get a surcharge in your electricity, Rather than damaging your equipment, it will be fed to this ground, which will distribute it in the ground. Well, that's fine unless certain conditions exist. If in the ground you have rocks that have two poles because they're made up of quartz and granite, for example, uh, these rocks are charged by the electricity coming from your ground when water is present. Water is the mode of transmission. So what you're doing is you're building a big magnet from the surplus electricity being sent on purpose to your house if they wanted to kill you. Now, within the house itself, what you have is a technical problem with electricity is that Magnetism, unlike electricity, does not transmit at a distance very well on large wires, but can go a long way on very fine wires. So they've got a link between the hydro box and the telephone box which then separates the magnetic electricity, electromagnetism, and sends it through to every place in the building, the house, the apartment, whatever, where you have a telephone connection. So you can build a magnetic field in a bedroom or in the kitchen, or in the basement. And that's how we first noticed it, is we got a new uh, uh, clothes washer.
washing machine from Megan as a present. We had to replace the one we had in the basement. We put it down in the basement, and within a matter of uh, two or three months, it didn't work. It wasn't the washing part that didn't work. It was the lock on the door to the washing machine wouldn't unlock. You stick your clothes in it, shut it, do your wash, and then it signals it's washed and you can't get the door open. Now, I then tell the taxi driver that this had happened at my place. And he lives just about a quarter mile, half a mile from here. And he said, same thing happened to me. He said, I called Sears and they came and they had to change the magnet on the door. And they charged me more than what the brand new washing machine cost due to service call. They came once, said they didn't have the parts with them and had to go back and do a second call. Of course, ours didn't get fixed. We didn't have the money to buy a machine and we didn't have the money to pay for the service. So ours is still in the basement with the doors locked. But I slept right next to where that washing machine was placed because we couldn't get it into the back where the other washing machine was. It's too wide, and we'd have to undo some of the walls to get it in there. And where I was, and you know what the basement looks like, the the bed in the basement is on the floor in the middle of the room. And that's right over the cement floor that is linked to the ground. So I went in and dug my way down there. And the first thing I discovered is For some reason, when people built the house, they put a pipe around the foundation, a big plastic pipe with holes in it, that is designed to divert water that would, on its own, want to stay next to the foundation and it brings it to a sump pump, which then pumps it out. Well, in our place, the the hose around was done opposite to what one would do. Rather than take water from the foundation and bring it up, It took water from up and brought it down to the foundation. So since water is the mode of transmission, it was purposely designed to bring water under the house. Then I began to read about electromagnetism and discovered that gravel is the means by which it locates itself in one place or another. And gravel can be different size rocks. 
and gravel can be made up of rocks that have more than one kind of material, granite, for example, and quartz. And when water brings them magnetism, because within the water there contains therein a certain amount of iron. That's why many places out in the country you'll see their toilets and their sinks have brownish yellow colors in the the enamel that has to be cleaned off regularly by special chemicals or it looks like you got shitty toilet for example. So the iron in the water flows and brings the electricity to the stone. And then the stones retain them retain that electricity in different places and when it gets a surcharge of electricity and that can come from the sun or from hydro overloading the system it electrifies electromagnetizes the rocks and they heat up and the problem when you have two different materials like quartz within granite, they don't heat up at the same speed. And when something heats up that was cold and you're turning it into hot, they break the rock. So you have a crushing of the magnetism by the internal structure of the rock itself. And you're building magnetic field that way. What I saw underneath this house is someone had positioned certain rocks, especially pink, red-colored rocks, in a way that would create a direction for magnetism when water was being sent down instead of up water would flow to these rocks which just happened you believe coincidence theories just happened to go to the center of the foundation which was in fact not built like the edge of the foundation the floor had no cement except for the top and our foundation is usually about eight inches thick but in the middle here what you had was gravel and only about two inches of concrete on top, but no concrete on the bottom. Whereas all around the edge of the house, there was a full concrete that would prevent any water or magnetism from affecting floor. Here, it basically provided the means. And as I was digging my way through all of that, <coughs> I came upon the rod, which is the grounding rod, about six feet by six feet in length, made of iron. It's a rod about the diameter of a dime and the wire from the electrical box is connected to the top and the bottom is a 
point. In the old days, they used to build houses and barns and put that type of rock on the roof. And the reason is lightning is electricity and it looks for the highest and thinnest point on a metal rod. Then at some time, and I'm not sure exactly when it began to change, the electrical companies insisted that lightning rods be removed from the roof, turned upside down, and put into the ground. Now, put it in the ground, you have to hammer it. To hammer it, you have to have the point down. And if you hit a iron rod with the point down, it goes down into the earth. And then in the part that's sticking out at the top, you attach the wire from your electrical panel. And you're at the mercy of the electrical company sending you surcharges. They don't mind because it's all on your meter. And you end up paying for it. In other words, you're paying to damage and kill yourself. And I didn't notice that and didn't understand that when I first looked at the rod, but at studying on electromagnetism, I found out. But manually, I discovered that it's a story put in history. It's it's like the tale of a choice for a king back in old England where a sword called Excalibur is stuck in the ground and knights are invited to pull it out. Whoever is going to pull it out becomes king. Well, here I was digging around the rod and didn't know exactly how long it was because I couldn't see the bottom till I got there. But I kept <laughs> trying to pull the rod out. And even to the point where I, you know, dug dug about three or four feet, and I still couldn't budge the rock that I attached it to a chain and tied it to the truck. And the truck couldn't pull it out. The truck would just spin its wheels in a dry driveway. So my only option was to keep digging. And I had dug something like four or five feet one day when I gave up. I sat down on the ground and put my feet on it. And leaning against the ground, pushed as hard as I could. And what happened is it wouldn't budge, but from where the ground was, I could bend it. Approximately the movement of an inch. And then when I let it go, it would slowly work its way back. I went to bed that night saying, I don't know how deep that bloody 
broad is. It must be at least 10, 15 feet. One guy told me that it was 16 feet long. I said, that can't be because you couldn't pound it into the ground properly. It's not a big enough circumference that if you banged hard enough to get it past some rocks and stuff, you'd bend it, and that would be it. You'd never get six feet. Next morning, I came down to the hole, and as I was taking my gloves off, I leaned on it, and it fell over. And I picked it up and looked at it, and it was only about six inches to a foot that had been in the ground. Somebody had created a magnetic field and holding the rod in the ground was a magnet. The ground was a magnet. And when the magnet is shut off, because probably the water running under the house had diminished and a connection was broken or something, there was no more magnetism in the rod. Or hydro had stopped sending surplus electricity to magnetize the rod. I don't know which. And then I thought of the story of King Arthur. Somebody wanted a pre-planned choice for a king. They would electrify the rocks in which Excalibur was in, and no one could pull it out until they shut the power off without telling the other contestants. That way, they could get their choice. Kings. Now, when I started thinking about all of this within the big picture of politics in the world, that's when what I told you before was explained to me by Sal. Prior to the Ice Age, a religion called Voodoo was created. And their instrument of control over the population was to demonstrate or tell whoever was interested that they had the power to affect a person at a distance by sticking a pin rod into a doll. What they weren't telling their prospect was at a time soon thereafter, they had the means to electrify, magnetize, electromagnetize the person's residence And all of a sudden, the person would develop certain physical disabling conditions, such as a heart attack or lung disease or breast cancer. And the person would get sick and die. They had no ways of fixing anything. And that concept was brought forward in the Bible. The 
the concept is called the Ark of the Covenant, which is a box with basically uh, two poles sticking out of it as wings in the drawings that they've done. That shows a spark jumping from one place to another. The same thing is defined in the story of uh, Moses' brother Aaron, who carried a rod, and when he threw the rod on the floor, there were uh, sparks coming from it, obviously in contact with something under the floor. Now, your friendly electrical company, without explaining any of this to the people of the world, have decided that our shelf life has expired, that the purpose for our particular gene pools that they manufactured prior to birth and transmitted through generation to generation to generation of transfer possible over four generations, which basically means 300 years time if everybody they lived for 80 years and no one would know that that had occurred if it happened 60 years ago or 120 years ago. But if you look at the governor of New York and his family's uh, history record, genealogy, the Cuomo's, they'll go back in time and tell you who was the father, who was the mother, who was the grandmother, who was the grandfather. And in practically all families in the world, you will find at one stage of the game, oh, there's a person that comes into the family through marriage or other reasoning, who is known to have been cared for by a monastery of nuns. And that that person is known as a foundling. The word is linked to foundation. Canada, last province, is an island out in the ocean between the North American continent and Europe, and that island is called New found land, and it has a piece of property, triangular in shape, on the mainland attached to it, called Labrador, laboratory, Labrador, the door to the lab. And in the history of Canada, without it being known it was going to be called Canada, Vikings traveled from Europe, all expense paid by nuns of the Vatican, during a period where the attention of the people of Europe 
was made to face east. towards the Middle East. And all of the fighting men and children were being sent there to establish Jerusalem while the Vikings traveled west. Greenland, Iceland, Greenland, and Labrador. They had to set up the North American continent in a manner that would serve their purposes over a period of 400 years. Because within 400 years, they could achieve their goal. And they looked at the North American continent and they said, Mexico will be the basement. The middle part will be called the United States. And Canada will be the attic. An attic is a place where you put things you're going to use later. And they began to make babies in the Labrador part of Newfoundland. And you can see the houses of the Vikings and and where they live. That's all been discovered recently in Newfoundland. And the first batch of babies that they made were from DNA which had been collected from the French in France. And they placed them on a piece of land next to Newfoundland that is shaped uh, because it's made in two parts, one like a number six, Cape Britain, and one like a number seven, which is Nova Scotia today, New Scotland. But of course, This was only number one, and the trial required that French-speaking people occupy a piece of property called Quebec City. So they evicted, as they had done in Israel, in 586 B.C., they evicted the French population that they had manufactured in the lab placed in that area, and those people settled on the east coast of the United States and in Quebec. Some went as far south as to go around Florida and ended up settling what we now call New Orleans, although they pronounced it Orleans. Orléans is a place in France where the gene pool came from. So once they had cleansed the sixes and sevens from the French population, they needed an Anglophone population, which would become the majority of people in Canada. And they brought them in from the lab in Scotland. 
called the property Nova Scotia, New Scotland. Nova is a new beginning, usually by the creation of a electromagnetic explosion on a big rock that turns it from a sun into a dark hole. <coughs> and they began to change the government of Canada, the one led by a governor general from France, the one led by a governor general from England. And they got pissed off when the population they expected would supply taxes to them, known as the pilgrims on the Mayflower, uh, turned out to be a colony of people who wouldn't pay taxes but wanted to keep the money in the United States. And there came a war of 1812 between England and the United States, supported by France. What has occurred since then is a number of people called United Empire Loyalists did not want to reside in this separated state called the United States and move to Canada, living mostly on the edges of the St. Lawrence River and all the way up the Great Lakes. And they fought on the side of the English keep the Americans within certain boundaries from coast to coast. And the idea was basically completed after the Civil War and the War on Indians in the United States, a country was allowed to flourish bringing in experts from all over the world, they created a society of different races, not as much integrated as in Canada, but more as ghettos throughout the country. Each group retaining its links back to their motherland, whether it be Germany or Austria or Poland or Ireland or Scotland or whatever, most of them being fed by white Europeans and served by slaves from Africa, and black islands in the Atlantic Ocean. And their shelf life from 1600 to 2000, give or take a few years because they deal with this four years either way, That period of time was given to them along with a task, and the task was inventing a system that would allow people to enter crafts that would take them into the air at first 
and eventually with the state. Because that gang before the Ice Age wanted to go to the stars. And they knew that it required a much bigger population than they would ever have on their own. So they decided to make, manufacture, fabricate a population and plant it after the Ice Age while most of them hid from view and destroyed as much of what they had built as a small, relatively small, few million people population. They ended up being on Antarctica, and eventually design pressure suits, same as what would be used to cross the Van Allen belt in space, but for this purpose to go down into an area beyond the pressure of the Earth's crust to a place called the Moho Discontinuity, from which they continue to rule the world today. The uh, 400-year period being the shelf life of Americans, they had to come up with a system prior to creating the population for destroying this population that would number into the hundreds of millions of people, knowing full well that they couldn't do it by war because of the fact that all of these people would have had a education grounded in engineering, mathematics, and physics, and therefore would probably be able to build the best army, navy, and air force in the world. So they had to come up with a plan that could kill millions of people at the appropriate moment in time. I don't think one plan serves the entire purpose, but will serve a large portion of the job of destruction of most of the people, and that is flushing the toilet called the Great Lake down to a place run by the that trap controllers who work on behalf of these people in hiding, run by nuns mostly, and convents strategically located all around the world that can in fact be used to create dissension in the world. Creation, of course, wanting only the best for the animals it would put on Earth, including humans, had designed a system where there would be a number of males and a number of females um, instead of the hermaphroditic beginning as the case requires at the beginning of any new 
life form, whether it be plant or animal, starts off with a bisexual hermaphroditic system and then divides into genders along the way. The idea being that they needed to make a lot of children quickly. And controllers basically said, we can genetically engineer the gene pool that humans will come from for a number of gene pools so that on the one hand a woman can carry six, seven, eight, ten babies in a lifetime and the way babies are made is by fornication with a male, and therefore we'll make the male in such a way that the male will be um, pleased by the act of fertilizing a female's cell the main cell being the one that ends up being a baby, an egg. Not so much pleasure for the woman uh, as for the man, so that when the female refuses to participate, the male becomes irritated and immediately temperaments change and frustrated males will then be responsible for the creation of war, pestilence, famine, and disease because they'll not be in the best mood possible. And to make that happen, we will give the female security against these frustrated males in the building of conflicts. So a system plan to be, say, 100 females for 100 males all of a sudden becomes 100 males for... 70 women and 30 males are left out and become frustrated. Babies can then be made genetically in the monastery through a system of cloisters, hidden spaces within the monastery where, through a process of genetic engineering, different gene pools can be made. In order to get the appropriate material for genetic engineering, the nuns of the monastery will provide the world with sacrifice upon sacrifice so that they can be viewed as the least likely suspect. They will run hospitals. They will run schools. They will wash floors. They will wash toilets. They will do all of the things that males don't want to do as they're off fighting wars or taking hold of the food supply 
and preventing other people from getting it without paying for it. People who pay are the slaves. Not just the workers in the fields, but the people who are then put into the armies to fight the wars. That's the process of clumping. You build churches with electromagnetic field underneath. You build schools with electromagnetic field underneath. You build hospitals with electromagnetic field. You build penitentiaries with electromagnetic fields. And the original design of human beings made to live 120 years can be controlled. You can control them through war, pestilence, famine, and disease, but you can also control them in jails, in hospitals, penitentiaries, in schools. And you can get people to adopt the children that you make in the monastery in the cloisters in other word attached to cluster and you can say oh somebody left this in a basket at our door and we've adopted it and it's now part of our family knowing full well that the genetics they carry will be carried on from generation to generation at least four times. And therefore, the babies made in the factories give out children who carry their genes sometimes active, sometimes silent. And they pass it on until someone is required to do a specific job programmed into the genes and can be turned on by a trigger mechanism, usually visual or oral. So you can have sleeper cells within every bureaucratic establishment whose job becomes, whether they know it or not, working for a system that gives orders which to most people would sound ridiculous or abnormal. But they do it because everybody tells them they should be doing it. And to save their careers and tension. We have reached the point 400 years later, the year 2000 or thereabouts, where those people who drove the system are about to lose their role in life. So The factory in Syria was turned on as it has been operating undercover for 2,000 years to make a new kind of immigrant called refugee.
and every country in the world through their genetic engineering, social engineering, political engineering, religious engineering, have been made to believe that every human being is equal and a person with a problem should be helped by a person who can provide the help. Well, the concept is a lie. People aren't the same. They are genetically engineered through a process which has been in play for thousands of years, and they have cats. The biggest task, of course, is called a bureaucrat. The second batch is the letter B at the front, followed by U R O water E A U. Bureaucratic crack. You're drugged, you're drunk, you're on standby for what we need. Rat, an explorer in a cave is where the rats came in. Started with ants, ants went underground, replaced by rats, replaced by bats, replaced by cats replaced by mountain lions. Flushing, New York. The home of the New York stem cells, otherwise known as meth. Elliot. Pierre Elliot Trudeau. Elliot is the word toilet. His son is now Prime Minister of Canada, number two. Second guy on the toilet job. What's the toilet? The Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Seaway. Lou at the Sioux. You break the wall. Walmart. Wall and rat. Always. A L W. Wall. A Y. The name of I, the genetic engineer who made Tutankhamun. It's about to happen since they've sent replacement refugees from Syria to take over the job of today's bureaucrat. It's not going to be the ones who arrive who become the new bureaucrat. It's their children. or their grandchildren, 20 years apart. In 2018, 20 years later is 2038. 2018, 40 years later is 2058. 2058 is the year they write in their Bible as the end of the world as we know it. This is a world run by bureaucrats. 
It used to be run by monarchs until 1789. But then the bureaucrats revolted and chopped the heads of the royals off and sent them to the labs so they could extract the brains and figure out what they needed to do in order to control things, and that's to create a bureaucracy. The new royals became politicians in a democrat country, like a tick, a bullseye. Two thousand eighteen is just around the corner. The process has begun. Twelve million refugees have come out of Syria. None of the people living in refugee camps were sent to Canada. The refugees sent to Canada were chosen by the UN. They are now in the process of making the new sleeper cell replace the sleeper cells that came to Canada after the war. World War One, World War Two, war in Korea, war in uh, what's that other place in the sixties? Vietnam. Vietnam. All made for a single purpose that a bunch of refugees manufactured would be sent. Came on boat. Breakup of Europe started this week. Yeah. Holland wants to come next. Canada was the home of the Dutch royal family during World War II. Two lips. Glenn. Yes, sir. I, um, I noticed that they approved uh, the vaccination, uh, that virus uh, vaccination, the Zika. Thing. Yeah. And I think it's linked to the shooting that happened, the big thing that happened in Orlando. I think, in my opinion, I may be missing the facts, but in my opinion, it looks like it's like a symbol for like going, uh, get rid of the male gender. Okay. War, pestilence, famine, and disease are instruments of the system's control. Four basic structures. They need to destroy Brazil so that Argentina can take over. How best to destroy Brazil than to have an Olympic and nobody comes? How best to destroy Brazil than to have a virus that creates small heads? Everything has been designed by the UN Hello? 
Yeah. War, pestilence, famine, and disease includes the use of firearms, going into schools and shooting kids, going into (coughs) universities and shooting women. Nuns run the show. They buy our sympathy by killing their own. Males in the priesthood are good at doing the work of building the churches and bringing in the money and the information from the citizens. But they're lousy at washing floors and toilets. They're lousy at bookkeeping. They're lousy at keeping records. Nuns are perfect trainees to do those tasks where they can learn everything without doing the work to get it. They wash floors, but they read books and copy them. That's a reminder that I'm giving you today about big picture. Can I ask a question about... um previous conversations you talked about how creation is destroying uh, chose to destroy the universe right this one and there's 24 or 26 other now is that trying to like uh, get that picture because just what's taking place on this planet why does that does that mean that it's a similar situation across the universe and that it would destroy the whole universe because of this what's happening on this planet? What will happen is going back in time to the where the problem began in this universe, taking a group of people of like mind to the system that would have existed prior to the problem beginning in this universe and abandoning this one and occupying the new place. By abandoning the system to the people who are now in charge, it's only a matter of time before they expand their project from one planet to the universe and eventually end up in the same place as countries are now. Okay. The root of the problem. while a new attempt at straightening out the system for the future is made in a fifth universe with one additional ability added to the people who are by then familiar with the concept of a universe rather than a country or a state or backyard Um, ability to travel based on the concept perfect speed is being there. In other words, in this new universe, people will be able to travel 
back and forth instantly. Perfect speed is being there is in the movie Jonathan Livingston Seagull. The word Livingston is living stone. That means an understanding of John, which is also a term used for toilet, living stone for magnetism, C, which means the space is like an ocean, go. Don't be so gullible as to believe what the media tells you. The media lie by omission. Politicians lie by omission. Both lie. Gotta go. Okay, Glenn. All right, Glenn. Okay. Bye for now. All right. Talk okay. again. All righty.